Okay, so question number eight. Calculate pH from molarity. So there are two instances on how we would do this. First, let's recall that the pH equation is equal to negative log of the concentration of protons in the solution. So in the first instance, we can have a strong acid which completely dissociate into their protons or into their ions. So if we know that strong acids completely dissociate into their ions, then this means that the concentration of our strong acid is equal to the concentration of the H+. Plus. So then we can solve for pH that way. So the second scenario is if we had a weak acid. Weak acids only partially dissociate into their ions. So in cases like this, we need to construct an ice table. Then once we have an ice table, when we solve for x, then that will be equal to the concentration of H+, plus, and then we can solve for pH. Okay, so let's see what the junior tutor said, because they might have some examples. Um, so this depends on what the substance is. If we have a strong acid, we simply use the relation between the pH and concentration of H plus ions. As seen in equation 1, pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of H plus. Uh, since we are given the molarity of the acid, we can know the concentration of H plus ions. Concentration of H plus is the same as the concentration of the acid, since strong acids completely ionize water into H+. We have a weak acid, so they denoted it as HA. We need to use its acid dissociation constant. This is given in equation 2. So they showed how Ka is equal to concentration of H+, times concentration of A- minus over HA. And note that the concentrations in equation 2 are equilibrium concentrations, which means that we need to construct an ice table for the equilibrium reaction. If we have Z, M, so like variable concentration of a weak acid solution, its ice table is shown below. So the Z would be our concentration, so like 0.1 moles per liter, or like 2 moles per liter, so depending on that. And then they show the change in X, and then this is the concentrations at equilibrium. So then we solve for X, which is the concentration of H plus ions in the solution. Knowing the concentration, we then use equation 1 to get the pH. Okay, so they also did it in the case of bases as well. So they say if we are given a strong base, we first need to get the concentration of H plus ions using the auto-ionization of water. So this is if you had a base, then you would use this relationship. So strong bases also ionize completely in water, but it ionizes to OH minus ions. So by using equation 3, they can get the concentration of H plus 
and then solve for pH. So it's just an extra step. And you can also have an instance where we have a weak base, so it doesn't completely ionize. And they show the relationship with Kb. So similarly, concentrations of an equation 4 are equilibrium concentrations, so we need to construct another ice table. And then solve for the value of x, which is given the concentration of OH minus ions in solution. And then once you find the concentration of OH, you need to plug it in to the KW equation to solve for H+. Plus. And then once you find the concentration of H+, plus, then you plug it into equation 1. Yep, so they gave all of the different examples. So this solution is correct. So just note that every time you have either a strong acid or a strong base, it's easy to find the concentration of H plus ions. But once you have like a weak acid and a weak base, uh, you'd pretty much just add an additional step like every time.